The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA, I'm the host of Be- Between Terminas, host of um, Last Few Brain Cells on Oriental Native Television. I'd like to welcome those um, hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriental Native Television. Um, we've got a lot to look at, obviously. Um, this past week, obviously, if we, I mean, like we've had some baseball, softball, um, track and field, lacrosse action. Um, I mean, like we're gonna address the weather situation. I know a lot of games have been postponed. Um, you know, through baseball, softball, I, I, I'll explain the weather situation, how that's been going um, there. Um, also, we'll see what teams are trending up, what teams are trending down. Um, I think there's several teams that are trending up, especially in girls' soccer. Um, also, we got to break down the basketball situation over at Bloomfield Hills. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of big news there um, surrounding um, surrounding the um, the fallout over there at Bloomfield Hills with them Phil Kirshen stepping down. We're going to talk that. Um, what's the um, effects that's going to be um, going forward there for Bloomfield Hills? So. A lot to cover. Um, obviously, let's go to our um, main story. Obviously, it's at um, Bloomfield Hills, of course. Um, you know, when you look at, of course, um, you know, when you, um, you know, when you, um, you know, you have to step down, you have to step away from coaching, obviously, and, um, you know, you get a promotion at work, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, and that's what happened here at Bloomfield Hills with Phil Kershaw. Um he got a promotion at, at his job um, in his family business, um, and unfortunately, he has to step down from coaching boys basketball. Um, Kershaw did in his five years at Bloomfield Hills. Um, he led the Blackhawks to two league titles, um, both in the OA White. Um, he shared those titles though with Stony Creek and Adams his first year, and then Lake Orion this past season. Um, ended up with a forty-seven and sixty-two record. Um, you know, but Bloopy Hills was trending in the right direction. They won 16 games this year. Um, fell to Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the um, district semifinals. Um, it was going to be a tough match for Bloopy Hills anyway. Um, Bloopy Hills had a really good team this year. Um, when you look at players like Noah Adam Jets, you look at um, Ben Canty, Carson Brodsky, um, you know, DJ Lee. Um, you got... Um, you got Manta, Mana and the um also who started for them this year. Um and they had a, and they had a nice bench. I mean, led of course by CJ Jackson. Um Brendan Newellen um played some time in J V. Of course, he was a five quarter guy this year for um Kershaw. Um I expect big things from him next year. He's gonna be a basic replacement Brodsky next year in the interior. Um so when you look at what Kershaw's done, I mean, like obviously, you know, he took over from Mike Mariansky. Um, of course, Mariansky is now coaching at Royal Oak Shrine. Um, but Bloomfield Hills really was, you know, they, they had their struggles. I mean, like they were, they, they've had their, um, their early, early years. They were down. I mean, like, and then Kershaw built the program back up. And then, you know, you look at where they're at now. I mean, like you look at Bloomfield Hills and say, okay, I mean, like now they're one of the top jobs in in the area now because of what Kershaw did with that program um I know a lot of things have happened with Kershaw obviously um he became a dad um you know and um you know and and he got a bigger role in the family business so that's why you know he's stepping down at Bluefield Hills I mean like um I mean like but um he's but what he did at Bloomfield Hills was absolutely incredible um turning that program around um getting them back to where they need to be um now when i look at bloomfield hills um without Kershaw, this is where it's going to get really interesting because they do return some key players you got noah adamchich coming back you have cj jackson armand taylor's coming back i mean like and program strength is not bad i mean this is this is a I mean, their program strength is actually pretty solid um, when you look at Blue Bay Hills. I mean, when you really look at it, I mean, they've got 
I mean, obviously, Adam Chich has been mentioned for Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. I know there's been a lot of people talking about that. Um, and then you look at the division. Obviously, we don't know what division Blue Bay Hills is going to be in yet. Um, could they be in the red? I mean, like, obviously, I think, you know, the red could be a very interesting division if Blue Bay Hills was in there. Um, could they be in the white? I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of questions. Obviously, if they're in the white, you know, then you got a question. I'm going like, okay, um, you're in the white. You've won the league title last three, I mean, two years. I mean, like, I, 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 if my own opinion, I think if, you know, they should be in the red. I mean, like, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see how that goes. I mean, will they be in the red? I don't know. I mean, but I think, you know, when you look at that, I mean, it's going by my own opinion. You know what I mean? But to me, you know, anytime you have a player like Adam just coming back, um, you know, I think, you know, um, that says a lot. But I'm curious to see who the new coach will be next year. Um, will Bloomby Hills go within? Um, will, um, I mean, like, if they go within, who would fit? I mean, like, who would fit there? I mean, who they go outside the box. I mean, like, obviously, you know, there is, you know, I'm curious to see who is going to get this job at Blue Bay Hills because it is a very good job. You're in a good area. I mean, like, you know, you're in a very good area. I mean, you know, I mean, so I am very curious to see how um, whoever takes this job, you know, it's going to have a pretty good team. You're going to have a superstar player for one year in Adamchich, but, you know, you got some players emerging. You know, their freshman program was solid. Their JV program was solid this year. Um, so when you really look at Bluefield Hills, I mean, like, you know, they're going to be a good basketball team. The question's going to be for them, it's going to be is what division are they going to be in? Um, and um, how will the new coach come in and, how will be the transition period? Because you know there's going to have to be a transition period during the season, and it's going to create a lot of headway. So that's going to be something to really watch for. Um, we um, talked about what's happened at Stony Creek. Obviously, with Steve Norgrove stepping down at Stony Creek, I mean, curious to see how that program's going to be. But Stony Creek's got a, I mean, Stony Creek, that's a good, that's a good job to have. I mean, like, obviously... You know, when you look at the Cougars job, um, Stony Creek has, um, you know, they got a very good player coming back to Peyton Rumbler. Um, they got very good role players as well. I mean, like, you know, when you look at Stony Creek, I mean, it, it, I mean, like, but the only downside of that is you got to go against Rochester and Rochester Adams, um, you know, consistently. Obviously, when you look at the Stony Creek situation, yes, program strength is there. I mean, they got some good talent there on that team over at Stony Creek in that program. Um, the question for me is going to be is who's going to take that job at Stony Creek, you know what I mean? And, you know, will they keep the same principles that Norgrove did over there or will they completely go and change everything? That's the big question I have over there with with um, Stony Creek. So... Obviously, when you look at the OAA, um, two jobs to keep a very close eye on are Bloomfield Hills and Stony Creek. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at, of course, looking at the jobs, um, at the coaching gigs, you know, Bloomfield Hills obviously got a star play coming back. Um, very good supporting cast. Um, Stony Creek, they don't really have that star player, but they got some, they got a lot of pieces, though. I mean, to, I mean, they got a very good guard um, coming back. They got a very good big coming back. I mean, like, program strength is solid, um, you know, for them. But the only downside of it is for Stony Creek is, you know, you're going to have to deal with Rochester and Rochester Adams, you know what I mean? And, you know, for your city rivals and, you know, and then with Bloopy Hills, obviously it's one town, you know what I mean? You know, even though that you're going to have, I mean, like, and you're not, competing you know you're not virtually not compete for kids so you know so i'm curious to see how that's gonna go so those are the two jobs we're keeping a very close eye on in boys basketball um with the um stony creek and the um bloopia hill situation um obviously you know um i know um 
And then when you look at next season, obviously the things we got to look at is obviously when you look, obviously Ferndale's run in boys basketball was incredible um, for second straight year, but they lose um, Travion Lewis. They lose Jason Drake. Those are going to be two big losses for them. Um, and then you look at um, So I'm curious to see how coach Juan Rickman handles that after making the state semifinals for second straight year. Um, for fall to a very good Grand Rapids Catholic Central team. Um, and so I'm curious to see how Ferndale handles it next year. Um, and then you look at, obviously, North Farmington. They got a lot coming back. Um, Prince Jackson, I mean, like, um, I think it's going to be a huge, huge addition for them to go along with Landon Williams and um, Ryan Hurst. Um, so North Farmington could be a team that could really much be in serious contention next year in the red division. Um, also maybe, maybe I, I could see coach Todd Negotian's team making a state title run, maybe, um, with the talent that's back. The only question I have for North Farmington is going to be the interior. Um, you know, you got to find who's going to be the interior guy in there for coach Todd Negotian. That's the big question for North Farmington. Um, Obviously, when you look at, um, you know, you got um, Adams. Adams loses a lot of talent, but keep an eye on Peter Caracas and um, and um, Brady Prescorn. Um, I think those are going to be two very good guys for Coach Jared Thomas to keep an eye on. Um, and then you look at, obviously, you got, you know, you look at um, Clarkston, you know, Clarkston. Um, Brandon Wiley is going to be a player to watch. Um I know they got um Brody Cozen, they got um they got Kevin O'Dighton coming back. Um but anytime you lose three very good capable players like Keegan was still like Zach Austin and um Nathan Simon, that's gonna hurt. Um so when I look at Clarkson, so when I look at Clarkson, obviously Brendan Wiley is gonna be the one that really is gonna have to stand out for them. I'm really high on him. I think he's gonna be a very good player for them to watch heading into next year. Um, and then you look at, um, and then of course you have um, Oak Park. Oak Park, we know what they have. I mean, like they lost, um, you know, they lost to you and each other with the last two years. They lose Ashton Henderson to graduation. Um, so that's something to really watch. Um, that's something to really watch heading into next year. Um, you know, and then Farmington, they got a lot coming back. Um, West Bloomfield's got a lot coming back. Let, of course, by Mitchell C. Um, so I'm curious to see where those two teams are going to be next year. Um, Bloomfield Hills, we talked already um, with the Cursion departure. I'm just curious to see how they're going to be. Lake Orion, obviously. When you look at Lake Orion, you lose Alden Ritt, Malachi Granberry, CJ Witt, and um, Trevor Witt. That's going to be a huge loss for them. Um, but you look at players like Nate Carvilla, um, Blake Liddell, um, um, I think and DJ Morrow are going to be um big big places coming back for Coach Jose Andrades. Um, so I'm curious to see where the Dragons are going to be. Um, I think Lake Orion will be an interesting. There will be a storyline for sure. I mean, like you know, but I'm curious to see how they're going to replace the production of Ritt and Granberry. Um, very curious to see how that's going to be like there. Uh, Troy's going to be solid. They got a lot coming back. Obviously when. I mean, like, obviously losing, um, you know, they're going to lose a key player um, in there, but they do have Darius Whiteside coming back, um, Chase Kniper coming back. Um, they lose Zach Fairless um, to graduation. That's the um, key player that they lose. Um, I really like, they have Pinoza coming back. Um, Pinoza, an outside shooter. Um, you know, they got Brody, you got, you got, Park, you got um, Brady Parker coming back. Um um, so when I look at Troy, I think Troy will be solid. Um, Groves, curious to see how they the, how they will do without um, you know, they lose Nick DeBose, and they lose Aaron, Aaron, they lose um, they lose DeBose and Lurts. So those those are gonna be two key losses for Groves. Um, um, obviously they got a good team coming back. I mean they got a good their program strength was okay. Um, so I'm curious to see how Groves will look next year. Um. Berkeley's got a lot coming back. Um, Oxford's got a lot coming back. Um, you know, those are, that's a team I'm keeping an eye on next year is Oxford. Athens has um, some pieces coming back. Um, Rochester, they lose a lot. 
but we'll see what happens there with them. Um, C. Holmes got some pieces coming back. Um, and then you look at um, a team like Royal Oak. Royal Oak's got some pieces coming back. I mean, like, there's some players to really watch for with them. Pontiac, obviously, Davion Hall. And then um, Harper Woods, they got a lot coming back. Um, you know, um, quote for Coach Swamp Porter. Um, Avondale's been much improved the last um, three years under Coach Pat Clancy. Um, Ferndale University, I'm really high on next year for Coach Josh Nix. Um, so when you really look at um, and then, of course, you have, um, and then you have, of course, um, and then, um, so, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the OA this year and basketball, boys basketball this year, pretty good year for the league. I mean, really, really good year for the league. Um, I'm just curious to see how things are going to look. I mean, heading into next year. I mean, like, you know, there, I mean, like, um, obviously, oh, Stony Creek, we also talked them also as well. So we did talk Stony Creek as well earlier on the pod. Um, so I'm very curious to see how the boys' basketball situation is going to look next year. But anytime you lose, um, but back to Bloomfield Hills, in a case where you lose a coach like Phil Kirshen, who's been really, really good um, for the program, um, it's going to it's gonna take, you know what I mean? I'm curious to see how they're going to name their new head coach there. I'm curious to see how they're going to handle things there. Um, I mean, like, so that's a job to keep a very close eye on there. Um, and then the Stony Creek gig. Also, when you lose a coach, like, see, Norgo has been there a while. Um, there's going to be, I'm curious to see the direction of both programs, where they're going to go this offseason. Um, really, really curious to see how things are going to be, especially next season in the OA, considering the OA had a really successful year in basketball. Um, of course, with Ferndale getting into the um, state semifinals in Division II, um, they got some questions. Can they repeat it, and how can they handle things without um, Travian Lewis and um, Jason Drake, who are now both graduating? So that is something to really, really keep an eye on as we head into the um, and the offseason in basketball. I know the AAU season has started up, um, so... That's something to really, really keep an eye on um, as we head into the um, off season. So let's go now from the basketball docket. Let's go to let's go to some spring sports. Obviously, um, I know that, and it's been pretty, pretty, um, you know, interesting, especially when you look at um, baseball and softball, especially because they have not. I know that um, there's been in summit aspects of the area they've played some games um and others have had to cancel because of field conditions um and i think the weather's been a lot to do with that because of you know with the field conditions and all that i know west bloomfield has just added a turf field um and then um obviously a lot of other place other schools they have grass fields um so when you look at Mother Nature, you know, it really hasn't been kind. I mean, like, especially the baseball and softball uh, with the weather, um, with the weather situation and all that fun stuff. I mean, like, you know, you look at obviously with the cold weather, you look at obviously field conditions not being the greatest. Um, obviously, you know, for the teams that have played, I mean, like, you know, that's been a, I mean, it's been great to see them all play. I mean, like, especially with the conditions, you know, that's been. I mean, obviously, with all the rain that's fallen in the area, um, with all the cold weather that's been, you know, we've had times where temperatures have been in the 30s or, like, in the 40s. Um, This week, you know, weather-wise, I mean, like, obviously, you know, putting on my meteorologist brain on here, um, you know what? I'm going to be honest, it could be worse. I mean, like, it could be worse. I mean, just imagine yourself if you're in the Upper Peninsula right now. I mean, like, you know, you know, just imagine, you know, I mean, they still got snow on the ground there. I mean, they got about, I think, maybe around maybe 10 to 20 inches still up, 
still on the ground up there. I mean, like in the upper peninsula. I mean, you know, I know I I read one report um from the National Weather Service up in Gaylord um that um there was still 26 inches of snow, I believe, in Paradise, um, which is right near Whitefish Point. So when you really look at, you know, it, it could be worse, you know. I mean, like, and imagine yourself here in North Dakota or Montana right now, and they're going to get a likely blizzard there. I mean, when you look at obviously going 10 to how about 12 to 24 inches of snow up there. So when you really look at um the weather conditions, you know what I mean? This is April. April is a tra transitional month, obviously, when you look at weather. And the fact that it impacts um baseball and softball so much, I mean, like, you know, uh, and I get the, some of the, everybody's, fr a lot of people's frustration. I mean, like the fact that they haven't been able to, you know, play, you know, the play up, up here in the state because it's been so cold, you know I mean? You have the, it's like the shifting seasons, obviously. And, you know, when you're going from, you know, when you're going from um, late March into early April, I mean, like, um, you know, you're going to be going through some, that transition to weather period. I mean, like, it's sort of like that in football season. When you go from, you know, from late September and early October, you know, when it starts to cool down and the weather just, it starts to, um, everything starts, you know, changing. And, you know, it, I get it. it. It takes a drag. I mean, like, it takes a drag on you. And, you know, and I think, you know, that's what a lot of these baseball and softball teams are going through right now is, you know, with the weather and all that. Um, now, I looked at the weather reports this week, and I think Monday and Tuesday are going to be fine. Um, Wednesday, looking a little iffy, maybe weather-wise. Um, I know there is a chance of thunderstorms um, on Wednesday this week. Um, and then Thursday, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to clear up precipitation-wise, but winds are going to be really interesting. I mean, like, so if you're, like, playing, if you're, like, playing baseball softball, you can definitely play in windy conditions. I mean, like, obviously, you know, I mean, like, um, you know, it depends, you know what I mean? So, and then, of course, Friday, you know what I mean, is um, Friday be a very nice day. So, obviously, um, you know, so those are my early, those are the early weather indications. Um, so I, I get it. I get it. It's been really frustrating weather wise for um it's been frustrating weather wise for um baseball and softball teams um but I know I've seen several teams play um in these weather conditions um and I've been really impressed especially in softball to see some of these teams play I mean like obviously when you look at a team like Bloompia Hills is off to a nice start um you know they're they, I mean they've had a good start I mean they had a good win against Berkeley the other day. Um, could Bloopy Hills be a team to really watch for? I mean, that's that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, and then, obviously, I saw Clarkston and Oxford. They played um, at Clarkston. Um, so that's something to really, you know, I think, you know, the, the issue for the issue is the staggering starts because of the weather conditions. Um, that's been the... I know it's frustrating and I know um I know it's also been frustrating for athletic directors as well, you know, I mean to schedule games. Um, you know, so that's that's something to really, really keep an eye on, um, is the up to the minute weather forecasts and everything. Cause, you know, we live in in Michigan and, you know, the weather can change from one day from one minute to the other. And you know, and um you know, like um, this whole week, it's supposed to be warm um, until later in the week when it starts to cool down a little bit. So, I am, yeah. So, if you're in, I mean, like, so, so my message to baseball and softball players, coaches, be patient. Um, you know, it's going to be, I mean, like, we'll get these games in, be patient. You know what I mean? You know, just, just going through like that typical, you know, I think it's an El Nino year, I think, that we're going through. So, that's something to really, you know what I mean? That's something to really, really um, 
keep an eye on. But I think Monday and Tuesday are really good weather-wise. Thursday, it'll be a little windy. Um, Friday will be a little windy as well. Um, probably Wednesday will be the one that I would worry the most when it comes to the weather. So that's something to really, really keep an eye on um, as we go forward in time. Um, let's go to my teams that are right now be playing up and playing down, right, trending up and trending down right now. Obviously, um, a lot to look at. Um, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to start with girls soccer first. And I think this is a good way to start off. I mean, like some of these teams have been playing really good soccer. Um, but I've been really impressed with Rochester. I mean, you look at Rochester, obviously, you know, yes, they're a perennial power in soccer, but they've, they've looked pretty good. I mean, like I've been really impressed with the play of, um, of their play lately. I mean, like, you know, they had, I mean, like they, they, they're a good team. I mean, I know they they got a set, they got a couple of girls basketball players on that team. Um, but when I look at Rochester, you know, they're a team that could. I think you know, if I had to grade the three teams in Rochester right now, which is Adams and Stony Creek as well, um, I would say Rochester right now. I think it's the best of the three because, I mean, like I I think you know when you look at and I know Rochester's been, um, they've been up and down. I mean, like, but I really like how they play. I mean, and I think that's a, that's a, they're a team I think that could do some damage. Um, the only unfortunate thing is when you look at Rochester is, you know, the city of Rochester is that they have to play each other in districts every year. And, you know, and it's really unfortunate, you know what I mean, to see those three schools have to play one another in the district, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's shocking. It's sad. You know what I mean? To see, um, that happen, especially when you have three very good programs, um, in the, in one community like Rochester and they have to play each other in districts. It's really unfortunate to see how that is going to be. So when I look at, and I'm going to look at, um, you know, when I look at the districts in soccer, and I think this is really interesting to see, um, you know, when it, when when you look at them, um, I mean, it's unfortunate for um, Rochester that um, that they are in a district with, I mean, like, I mean, that the three Rochesters are in the same district. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just pulling up the district assignments right now here. Um, so, um, I'm looking at, I mean, let's go to District 5 first. I mean, like, I'm going to talk a little girls' soccer districts first here. Um, break that down a little bit here. Um, District 5 is to be taking place at Lake Orion. You got Clarkson, Davison, Flushing, Grand Blank, Lake Orion, Lapeer, and Oxford. Um, last year, Lake Orion made a run, and they had to knock off Grand Blank. And, you know, when you look at this district here, it's pretty much the same as last year. Um... I really think Lake Orion's got a shot to do this. I mean, like, I, I mean, like, I know Grand Blank's gonna be very good. Again, um, Oxford's been very solid as well. Um, but I really think when you look at this district here on paper, um, I think the Dragons, you know, despite their struggles early on, um, I know they're going through a lot in the red this year. So, you know, I, I really think Lake Orion could do some damage. I mean, like, I really. You know, I think they got a shot. You know, Clarkson's had a Clarkson's not a bad team either. I mean, Oxford we know is very solid. Um, Grand Blank we know, we know Grand Blank's Grand Blank. So we'll see what happens there in that district. Um, district six at West Bloomfield, you got Bloomfield Hills, um, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Northern, Waterford Kettering, Waterford Mott, Lakeland, and West Bloomfield in there. Um, Obviously, you know, you got to look at, obviously, you know, Wall Lake Central is a very good team. Um, Wall Lake Northern is also solid as well. I mean, so it'd be very tough, I think, for the OA to get a team out of that district. So we'll see what happens there in that one. Um, district 7 at North Farmington. You have Farmington, Farmington Hills, Mercy, um, Livonia Stevenson, um, North Farmington, Novi, a and and Wall Lake Western. Um Nova is the team that stands out there. Um, I think Western could could compete as well in that one. Um, so, I, but I think Nova is the team that really that really stands out in that district over there at North Farmington. Um, 
Let's go to district number um this going down the district thirteen. This we at Troy. This is a this is a very tough district. Obviously, you look at Berkeley, you have Grove, Sea Home, Royal Oak, Troy, Troy, Athens, Warren, Mott. Athens is ranked in the state. Obviously, I think Troy's a team to watch in this district as well. Berkeley's off to a nice start. Um, Groves is a team to really watch for. seahome has been solid as well. I know Seahome had a really nice game with Pioneer the other day. Um, so I'm curious to see how that district's going to go. Um, I really think, though, Athens right now is a team that really stands out in that district. Um, district 15 at Romeo, of course, the three Rochester schools. We talked earlier about them. Romeo, Utica, Utica Eisenhower, and Utica Ford. This is a very difficult district at Romeo because when you really look at, obviously, you have the three Rochesters there. Um, you have Utica Eisenhower, who's always been solid. Utica's had it, has been very good as well. Um, so I'm curious to see how, um, how this district's going to look. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the favorites there in that district, you have to start with, I think it's, it's anybody's district to take. I mean, like, I mean, like when you look at that, that district there, um, I think when you look at, um, and you know, I, the team that really stands out to me is Rochester. Um, Rochester's a team that really, I think could do some damage, obviously. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, we will see how things go in that district there as well. Um, District 27, this will be at um, Livonia Clarenceville. Um, you have um, Livonia, um, you have Cranbrook, Kingswood, Birmingham, Marion, Mumper, Detroit Renaissance, Ferndale, Livonia Clarenceville, Madison Heights, Lamphere. Cr Birmingham, Marion's the team that really is the one you got to worry about when you look at this district. Um, the Mustangs, we know they're solid. They're very good. Um, I think they're going to give some problems to some teams this year. I, I really think that they're going to be a team that could do some damage. Um, you know, but when I look at the chances for um, Ferndale, obviously in this district, I, I really think there's a shot that they could do make a run maybe in this. I mean, but they're going to have to go through. I mean, there's some teams I think that look beatable. I mean, I'm not impressed with Mumper, not impressed with Renaissance. Madison Heights, Lampier, I think they can beat. Labonte, Clarenceville, I think they can beat. So it's something to really keep an eye on when you look at Ferdale um, in their path in the postseason. Um, District 23 at Fenton. You got Avondale, Fenton, Holly, Lake Fenton, Linden, Brandon, Pontiac. Um, when I look at this district at Fenton, I think this is, I think it's a good chance for, um, I think there's a good chance here for, um, Maybe an 0-18 to make a run. I mean, obviously, you got Fenton, who's solid. You got Linden's not a bad team. Brandon's not bad. Um, I think there is a chance maybe an Avenel or a Pontiac could make a run in this thing. I mean, I mean, like, um, but, you know, it's at Fenton. It's at, I mean, like, I mean, like, it's taking place at their um, grass stadium over there at Fenton. Um, I think Fenton's got a good chance to win this one, but I think Brandon's the one you really got to keep an eye on in that district. So that's a team to really keep an eye on there. And then District 20, 28, um, this will take place at St. Clair. Um, you got East Point, Gross Point North, Harper Woods, Marysville, St. Clair, St. Clair Shores, Lake Shore, and Warren Fitzgerald. Um when I look at Harper Woods, obviously, um, don't know much about their soccer program, um, but I think they could make some noise um, in this district. But I think, you know, when you look at, obviously, you got Marysville and St. Clair, um, those are going to be some two tough teams to handle. Then you have Gross Point North in there. Um, so I'm very curious to see how that's going to look, especially when you look at... Um, Harper Woods' chances. Um, so it's something to really look at. Um, just looking at the girls' softball, uh, girls' um, soccer districts early on, when, I, when I'm seeing from the districts, um, I think there's a chance that, um, you know, Harper Woods has a chance to win that district. So we'll see what happens there um, in that district. So we, we will see what happens. Um, okay, now let's look at... Um, Okay, now let's look at the um, 
let's look at other districts as well. I mean, like I want to go to, I want to go from different sports and different sports districts. Of course, um, you know, we'll bring that up each week. I mean, let's go to softball. I think softball is a very interesting, um, interesting districts, obviously baseball, softball, usually the same. Um, but when you look at the districts, I mean, like, obviously, um, you know, I mean, like they, they, they make some changes this year. I mean, they made some changes, um, looking at, see if there's an OA school in the districts here. Um, let's see here. Um, let's go to district 22. I mean, like, uh, district 21 at Farmington Hills Mercy, you got Grove, Seaholm, Farmington, Farmington Hills Mercy, and Soften A&T. Um, when you look at this district early on, I mean, like, Farmington Hills Mercy is going to be the team to beat. Um, Mercy's solid. I mean, I mean, like, um, but I think Groves could give them some problems. I really think they could. Um, I, I mean, like, it, it's, it'll be interesting. I, I think Groves can definitely give them give them some competition. Um, I think, but when I look at this district, though, Mercy, it's Farmington Hills Mercy. So when you really look at it here, it's at, they're at home. Um, Farmington could give them some problems, um, maybe. Um, but until anyone proven otherwise, I just think it's going to be the Marlins district to lose in that one. Um, district 22. Um, Royal at Royal Oak. You got um, Berkeley, Detroit Renaissance, Ferndale, Oak Park, Royal Oak. Um, I think Berkeley's got a shot at this thing again. I mean, it's funny because for Detroit Renaissance, Berkeley's been their kryptonite all year long. And not only has it happened to them in volleyball, it happened in the girls' basketball. I think it could happen in softball because I really like what coach, um, what Berkeley, what, um, what Berkeley's has this year. I think Berkeley could be a very dangerous team in this district. Ferndale's a wild card here. Um, I just think when you look at the Eagles, obviously they've had a lot of district championship success. Um, I mean, like Royal Oaks, an interesting team to really look look at too. I mean, like I think they're going to be an interesting team to keep an eye on. Um, and it's at their home stadium, so that does help things. Um, but I think I think Berkeley's got a great shot to win that district. I really do. Um, District 25, this is Lake Orion. You got Clarkson, Lake Orion, Oxford, Waterford, Kettering. This is a very tough district. Um, obviously, when you look at this district here, um, obviously, you have Clarkson, Lake Orion, Oxford. They're going to be three very good teams there. Um, you know, Waterford, Kettering's not a bad team with their pitching. Um, so I'm curious to see how these four teams match up. Um, in that district, I'm curious to see how these four teams really match up. I mean, like, um, if I had to give a slight edge right now, experience wise from the postseason, you got to give to Oxford because of they won their district last year. Um, and it was a tough district, of course, and a knockoff Grand Blank. Um, you know, they were in the Grand Blank district, of course, Grand Blank was upset by Davison, and then they, um, Oxford took advantage of. By winning that district, they knocked off Lapeer, they knocked off Davison. Um, you know, so that was a very interesting district. Um, I, I, I expect it's going to be very competitive between the four schools. I really do. I expect it's going to be very competitive. Um, so something to really keep an eye on there. Um, district 27, this one's a um, wild card one. You got at West Bloomfield, you got Bloomfield Hills, North Farmington, Waterford Mott, West Bloomfield. I really look at this district, and there's two teams that stand out. I mean, Bloomfield Hills and North Farmington are the two that really stand out here. Um, I think the Raiders have a great chance to win this district. But keep an eye on the Blackhawks. I mean, I've been really impressed with Bloomfield Hills, um, the way they've been playing. Um, so that's a team to really keep a close eye on as we head into the postseason. Um, but I think that's going to be – it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, District 28, that'll be at Stony Creek. You got, um, Avondale and the three Rochesters. Um, Rochester, Adams, and Stony Creek. Stony Creek's the favorite, in my opinion, because of what they got back. Um, I think when you look at, obviously, you got Rochester and Adams. I mean, the Rochester's a solid team. Adams, we know they're getting better under Coach Francis Wojcic. Um, Avondale has been a very interesting team. But I think Stony Creek... A lot more experience. Um, 
We'll see what happens there. Um, District 29 at Utica Ford. You got Stevenson, Troy, Troy, Athens. Um, Utica, Utica Ford. Um, when I look at this district here, Utica, of course, won their district um, last year. Um, I expect Utica to be in the conversation again. So I, I think Utica is a team to really, to really keep an eye on. And I think when you look at Utica, um, I really think that they, I mean, like, um, but I think Troy could, Troy's a dark horse. Troy's a sleeper because when you look at Troy, um, I think the Colts are a team that could, they could make some noise. Um, they could, um, I think they could. So we'll see what happens there in that district. Um, Troy Athens is another one to watch as well. Utica Ford's a sleeper as well. So we'll see. We will see. Um, District 55, this will be at, um, host hasn't been yet confirmed yet, but this is where Harper Woods is at. You got Detroit Denby, Detroit East English, Harper Woods, um, Harper Woods Chandler Park, and St. Clair Shore South Lake. Um, obviously, you know, Harper Woods, we know that rivalry with St. Clair Shore South Lake and Chandler Park Academy. We know that rivalry. Both their rivalries have been, have had some great games, especially in the basketball docket. Um, when you look at Harper Woods' chances, um, I think South Lake right now is the team that really stands out in that district. Um, but Harper Woods has a shot. I mean, like, they have to play well. I mean, like, if they if they play well, I think they, they'll be fine. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, we will see how that goes. So Harper Woods, um, Harper Woods really is going to be the team that um, really, really stands out. Um, so when I look at um, so when I really look at it here, I, I mean like Harper Woods could be a team that they're a sleeper. Um, let's go now from softball. Let's go to baseball. Um, obviously when you look at baseball, um, uh, we really, you know, I haven't really been able to break down the districts as much as I'd like to on the pod, especially with basketball. We've covered a lot of basketball lately. Um, I haven't talked breaking down these districts yet. So, so gonna break these districts down we break broke down the soccer districts we broke down the um broke down the um softball districts early on um let's look at our first district here this will be at a host not yet confirmed this is district 19 um i still think it'll be at um uad jesuit but yeah detroit renaissance uad jesuit ferndale oak park a and t um when you look at this district here um i don't know if i see any of the Three, these three OA schools competing in that. Um, I think it's going to be a UAD Jesuit Detroit Renaissance district final. Um, I got to give an edge to UAD Jesuit, especially with the experience they got back. Um, so until that district is, um, I still think that district is the Cubs to lose. So we'll see what happens there in that district there. Um, district 20 is going to be at Troy Athens. You have Berkeley, Groves, Royal Oak, Troy Athens, Warren Mott. Um, when I look at this district here, um, you got to, I look at obviously Troy Athens would be the early favorite, but keep an eye on Berkeley. Um, Groves is a dark horse to watch. Um, so I, I, it's a wide open district in that one. I really think it's a wide open district. So we'll see how that one goes, but I got to give an edge to Athens being at home. Um, but Berkeley and Groves are not that far off. Um, district number, um, Let's see, district number 26. This would be at Birmingham, Brother Rice. Um, you got Seaholm, Brother Rice, Farmington, North Farmington. I mean, sorry, Seaholm, Brother Rice, Farmington, Lavonia, Stevenson, North Farmington. Um, this one's interesting because Birmingham, Brother Rice, we know has been a perennial baseball power. Um, but don't count out North Farmington. Don't count out Farmington. Um, you know, don't count out Sea Home either. I think those teams could give could give them some fit, could give Brother Rice fits. I mean, Brother Rice looks to be the early favorite in this district. But I but I think they could be um it'll be interesting, you know what I mean? But I, I think Brother Rice has to be the early favorite. Um, but keep an eye on North Farmington. Um they got Ryan Shelby on that team. Keep an eye on um Farmington. They're a wild card team to watch. Um, 
they could I think Brother Rice, you know, I mean that district looks it looks Brother Rice on paper, but I think there could be some problems. So I'm curious to see how that district's gonna go in that one. Um District twenty eight at West Bloomfield, they got Avondale, Bloomfield Hills, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Troy, West Bloomfield. Um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's ranked in the country, ranked in the nation. I mean, like um top team in the state, loaded with boatloads of future major league baseball prospects. Um I just don't see anybody beating Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I'd be really shocked if somebody did. Um, and I and I feel bad for Avenue, Bloomfield Hills, Troy, and West Bloomfield, but I just don't see anybody knocking off Orchard Lake St. Mary's, not in this district. Um, of course, all these are early thoughts, you know what I mean? So I just want to get everybody to know that, you know, early thoughts. Um, district 29 at Rochester, you got... Rochester, Adams, Stony Creek, um, Romeo, Utica, Eisenhower. Um, this district here, I got to give an edge to Adams because of, um, obviously, Parker Pico is a big, big factor here in this district. Um, Rochester's not a bad team. Um, Romeo's interesting. Utica, Eisenhower's interesting. But I still think when I look at this district here, it wouldn't surprise me if Rochester and Adams were to meet in the district final. Um, I think both those teams are very good, um, very solid programs. Um, but I got to give an edge to Adams, especially because of Pico, um, what they have back there. So I think Adams will be a team to really watch for in that district there. Um, district 30, this will be at Oxford. You got Clarkston, Lake Orion, Oxford, Kettering, Mott. Um, this looks to be a three-team district when I look at it. I mean, Clarkston's got a very good pitcher. Um, Oxford, we know they're loaded with experience. Um, Lake Orion's got experience. Um, so when you really look at it here, I, I know offense to Waterford Ketting or Waterford Mott. I know they're going to be okay, but I just think this is a three team district between the Wolves, Dragons and Wildcats. So those are the teams I'm really keeping an eye on in that district there. Um, and then let's go to. Division two, obviously, this is where we have a couple teams here that are in this district here. I'm just looking for um, just looking for it right now here. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um, here we go. Um, district fifty six. We got um, we got um Harper Woods. They're um. They're in a district with Detroit Denby, Detroit East English, Detroit University of Science and Math, and Harper Woods, Chandler Park. I think Harper Woods has a great chance to win this district. I, I mean, like, with everything that's, you know, when you look at this district, I'm not sold on Denby, East English, nor Detroit University Prep Science and Math. Um, I know baseball has been growing in Detroit, obviously. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at um, baseball there, um, but, um, when I look at Harper Woods and Chandler Park Academy, um, I think Harper Woods has a shot to win this thing. I really do. I mean, obviously with Chandler Park, um, you know, Chandler Park's a solid team as well. But when I look at this district here, I mean, like, I think Harper Woods is a good chance. Um, now we'll see what happens with them going forward. So very, very curious to see how things go. But I got to give a slight edge to Harper Woods in that district in baseball. So that is something to really, really keep an eye on there um, in, um, in the districts. And, you know, so now when you look at these districts, obviously these are my early thoughts when I look at them here. Um, I haven't posted them on the blog or anything like that. Um, but these are my early, early thinkings about how the baseball districts would look, you know, will go. Um, something to really keep an eye on as we head into the, um, as we head, I know we're very, very, very early. Um, I'm giving you my postseason thoughts, obviously. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, when you look at these districts, um, you know, so that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, you know, when you look at previewing baseball, softball, um, and, um, and um and girls soccer of course they have districts and they have the regional obviously we're going to do regional preview next week for track and field 
Um, track and field. I mean, like, obviously, you know, that's something we have to talk about. Um, a couple teams are out to good starts. Um, Stony Creek girls, um, b- girls and boys track and field out to a nice start. Troy boys and girls are out to a nice start. Um, of course, they were very impressive. Um, Lake Orion's boys off to a good start. Um, and then, of course, um, Oxford's girls off to a nice start. Um, Adams is also off to a nice start as well. I mean, they had a nice, they had a good battle with Clarkston. Um, you know, Adams boys and girls. So I'm curious to see when you look at, when you look at how track and field is set up, obviously, you know, obviously when you look at Oak Park, you know what I mean? They're, they're more of a regional type team, you know, like, you know, like an invitational team. Um, not much of a dual meet team. Um, I would wish Oak Park would be that type of team, but I mean, it's the program they run over there. Um, and then you look at obviously, uh, and then you look at, um, I mean, Royal Oaks, another one I'm high on this year. I mean, they're another one. Um, and they've been solid. Um, both their boys and girls. Um, you know, and then of course we talked white already. Um, I think when you look at the blue, it's going to come down to on the boys' side. I think it's going to come down to Farmington, West Bloomfield, and um, Groves. I really think that in the girls' side, I got to give an edge to see home there, especially with their distance program. They've been really solid. I think the white could be a really fun division to watch all year long because you know you got um. You got Troy, Stony Creek, um, you know, and Bloomfield Hills in there. I mean, like, I think that could be, that could, especially in the girls' side, that could be a fun, fun um, league race to watch all year long, I think, with those three teams. Um, gold, I still think it's Royal Oaks division to lose. Um, and then in the red, obviously, when you look at in the red side of things, you got, Lake Orion, uh, on the boys' side, you got Lake Orion. I think the Dragons right now would be, um, I think Lake Orion's the team to beat in the, um, in the boys' side. And then in the girls' side, I think it's Oxford. Um, but keep an eye on Adams. I think Adams in both boys and girls are sleepers. Um, I really think the Highlanders were a team to really, really watch for, um, in that division. Um, tennis, you know what I mean? Um, let's go now to, let's go to tennis. I mean, like I didn't bring up tennis last week on the podcast. Um, and I think, um, you know, I didn't know much, but I think I got a, I got a little bit of an idea now. Um, obviously when you look at, um, you know, when you look at tennis, um, obviously the teams that do stand out, Bluefield Hills, Clarkston are teams that are going to be the ones to watch. T home's another one to keep an eye on. Um, and I'm looking at, um, and I'm looking at it from last year, obviously, when you look at, when I look at my thoughts, obviously, when I look at my, um, you know, when I, when I do my previews, um, when I do my previews, um, you know, you got to look at what happened last year. I mean, obviously we had a, um, we had a state champion. Um, we did have a state champion in way last year in girls tennis, um, I think it was Boopy Hills that won it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I mean, I think Boopy Hills can make another run. Seahome can make another run as well. Um, but there's a lot to like in the tennis game um, coming up this season around the OA. So that's something to really keep a close eye on um, going forward there. Um, before I let everybody, before I let everybody go. Um, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Obviously, we're keeping an eye, keeping our fingers crossed. Hopefully, the weather really pans out. Um, I am not real optimistic about my Wednesday forecast, but we'll see how things go. Um, hopefully, you know what I mean, we can get some more games in we could talk about, obviously. Um, you know, but right now, we got to go with what we got right now. So, <laughs> so that's what it is, what's been going on around the... Um, Around the spring sports docket. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, in time, we're going to also keep an eye on the situations on the boys basketball docket over at Bloomfield Hills and um, Stony Creek. Um, those are the, um, we're keeping an eye on those jobs. Um, also, you know, I know a lot of people have been looking at football. I mean, like, obviously, um, my football, um, 
early thoughts. I mean, like, um, I haven't released those yet, but I'm starting to get a really good idea of what the teams are going to look like this coming this coming season. Um, so something to really keep an eye on. I know it'll be Harper Woods' first um, year in the OAA for football, so that's something that will be really interesting to keep an eye on as we um, look forward heading into the um, early parts of spring and we head into the summer, and then, of course, fall. You know, it'll be really interesting to keep an eye on. So, We'll see what happens going forward. All right, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, keep an eye on the blog um, at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll, we'll break in um, if um, any. Uh, we'll break in um, if um, if there's any important news on the blog um, at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com to um, for the latest information on. Um, what things are going around the OA. So, all right, everybody, let's sign off here. Um, take care. God bless. And um, I will see you next week, everybody. See you next week, everybody. God bless all.